Freddy, actually, this time? SG versus Newbie? Game one. Hey, hey, there we go. It's a draft, and it's an itty-bitty baby draft. Let's see. Who'd uh, itty bitty baby. We got a, a Beastmaster and a Night Stalker banned out by Newbie. We got Nyx and Earth Spirit banned out by SG. Don't worry, I ate my carrots. I'm glad I'm you can see that, Trent. I, I yeah. feel completely blind. I cannot see those. Yeah, bands. I cannot see it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bring it up for you guys. Okay. We'll hop in the next lobby next time. But uh, so, yeah, again, still two more bands remaining in that first phase. You get a total of six now, and I believe that is a Bane now removed here by SG Esports. So we're hitting all the big ones that we were talking about. And uh, Io will now be taken out here too. So Lich so still in. Yeah, yeah one question. I, I didn't test it. Uh, so what's with Io and the uh, Aghanim scepter? So, so you just tether someone and he gets a free Aghanim? If you have Aghanims, yeah, you have to. You can tether someone and give them the Ag's ability. It'll put the same but little buff like an Elk does while you're tethered. But you need to have Ag's on Io, right? Yeah, you got to buy an Ag's on Io though. So it's like, eh. The attack thing is hilarious. Yeah. Big fan. Huh? It's just a talent. What do you mean? The IO thing? Oh, you don't have to buy eggs? Oh, you don't have to yeah, buy eggs. That's what I meant. Thank you, oh, Suns fan. My I mistake. Mean, that's, I've been misinformed. That's ridiculous. Actually, yeah, like imagine actually having ridiculous. four other free eggs with just the tether. So it's level 15. Te uh, the talent is tether grant scepter bonus, and then level 20 is attack tethered allies target. There's so going to be a, a lot of those. Yeah, I don't mistakes think we're, I don't think week, we're gonna see you know. a wisp. <laughs> to be That's actually absurd. I mean, uh, wisp pretty much uh, gets a lot of levels. Uh, He's the one that's buying tomes. So if around 20 minute mark, you can have two tomes, and if you're involved in a lot of kills, y you'll get to that level 15. Yeah. This hero is absurd. Dazzle, level 10. You get the 60 damage now. Bring oh back core man. dazzle, possibly. We'll Why see. Why not? Absolutely. Yeah, get some minus armor items going. But it's, and they've completely reworked poison touch now, where it no longer stuns, but if you keep auto attacking, it maintains the slow. And it also, it's like AOE now. It bounces to other targets, yeah, like uh, uh, similar to Ether Shock. Yeah. 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 So um, Dazzle now, I mean, even if you're playing him as a support, having that damage talent early on just allows him to, to put on a lot more pressure than he used to be able to. I'm not sure why Mirana needed to be changed with the leap. So you can leap yeah. three yeah. times. The charges. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. It's impossible to kill her with the, the actual lockdown. It is a long charge replenish time. Like it starts out, you, like you don't really want a lot of levels. So it starts out at a full minute um, at with just level one. And of course, you want to kind of be maxing out Star Storm and so stuff. So if you just uh, use it on level one, let's say. The, when you first skill it, you instantly have three charges, which is so pretty it's sweet. It's pretty impossible to kill on an offlane, let's say. True. Yeah, nah, that's not bad. Just use it once. They try to go again. You just use it one, one more time. Use Flask. You're good to go. Not uh, too surprised to see Nature's Prophet staying around. Definitely going to be a, a strong hero again this patch, I'm sure. He's looking all right. Decent level 10 talents, the 30 movement speed of the 30 damage. He did lose out on the health talent I think he had before. But and Sand King remains. Okay. Yeah, Anti-Mage uh, looks also <laughs> pretty ridiculous. What did you think uh, about that talent where he leaves an illusion behind after blinking? Oh, that, that's so good because you can't chase him. Yeah, you like yeah, breaks you blink daggers, disables right? blink daggers, burn the mana. It's very interesting, yeah. And it's like every time you blink too. So you think it's just like one cheeky, but no, it really adds up. Like there's a bunch of these AM illusions just like yeah, camp farming some jungle camps, chasing people. Yeah, but people. you don't need to finish the, the camp when yeah, you're exactly. farming. You just leave leave a creep and uh, right. blink away. The, the illusion will finish it. And just yeah. It excels your farm. Also, Battle Fury is buffed as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Death Prophet now going to be the fifth ban for SG. They've also, like, we already discussed a bit about, like... Hurry up, boys. I want to see the game. Stuff. Yeah, I know. <laughs> 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 We've talked about game flow in terms of, like, how is the pace going to change. Uh, in terms of trending stuff with pubs, people have definitely been talking about uh, hard carries. Extremely high win rates. I think Medusa's gone up, like, 10%. She's looking good. Keep in mind, Annie Mage is yeah. banned out, too. Well, Medusa got buffed. Uh, yeah, yeah. You don't yeah, have yeah. to oh use yeah, a split, split shot. shot. Uh, there's no reduction. And on level 25, you, you're pretty much like a gyro. Also, gyro is one of the heroes that uh, caught my eye. The Worth hero. noting, um, Arc Warden's also still in, right? He, uh, yeah, yeah, he has made it this far. Absolutely. Through 10 bans. This is a full game of bans before this patch. Yeah. And there's still a possibility here for SG Esports. That one's going to take a while to get Drow used to. Drow as well. Six bans. And there's the Queen of Pain. All right, so we talked about Quap as one of those heroes that might actually be interested in a couple of these new items. Yeah. Like there were a lot of in items added, so things like, you know, these nullifiers and I, I think Kaya. The, like the Kaya item, perhaps, is sort of the new Aether Lens, gives you that spell lamp and also makes you a little more resistant to, uh, like, mana burn mechanics. Could potentially replace a Veil for her if people want to try it out. 
Yeah, but also Vale's still extremely strong on the hero, and you still want to build Orchid, so... Yeah, uh, why on every item the damage was removed? Oh yeah, I don't know. They just took away all the bonus damage. Just, just get out of here. The Warren's pretty much everything. They, they yeah. took the damage off. I wonder if there's anything to do with how they change the stats now, where you get like the status resistance and uh, the movement speed. If that some, somehow kind of balances it out, I, I don't it know. It it's feels like it's more of a patch where, where everyone deals magic damage instead of right-clicking. That's fair. There is definitely a more magic damage. Yeah, but why and is Hood not uh, nerfed then? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a good question. I guess maybe because you need it, right? <laughs> There's going to be that much magic damage. Uh, yeah, that's a fair point. Get ourselves the Darkseer. So he's still relatively chill. That 90 damage at level 10 possibly yeah, doesn't get the HP regen. Yeah, but look at level so. 20 talent on, on Darkseer. 300 AoE surge, so you just smoke up and uh, like everyone is hasted. Mini You're Centaur. So yep. if you have a centaur with eggs uh, plus a dark seer, you just run across <laughs> the map. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, doesn't dark seer have a new talent now? The the parallel wall, yeah. so he can make like yes. the sandwich of walls in team. Is that a level twenty five okay. talent? It's a twenty five. So okay, so it's, it's pretty it's a bit far off. Eh. If you get a refresher, then you make a cube, like a cube, <laughs> and pick a third roche refresher. Get in so the we'll cage. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, That's. I get hadn't thought about that. that. We get a hexagon going. We got. Oh, this is good. These are some great ideas. That's why you're here, Lacoste. Those. Those creative ideas. Oh, here we go. The skeleton guy. Wow. All right, bring him on out, baby. Do you think the skeletons are just Valve's way of saying he should be skeleton king? We yeah. have to call him Wraith King, but now he's got skeletons. He's damn putting it. up a stand here, I'd say. Yeah. All right. So reincarnate. Good. Am's gone. They banned PL. So. People who will still buy Diffusal I mean, Blade, even with it being changed and nerfed pretty heavily. I think and Wraith King burn, obviously. still Jog. has some issues, though. Or isn't isn't the, the core problem with this hero, he's great in the lane because he has a tapering slow and a stun. Mid-game, he's a little bit weak because he has to farm, and then he kind of comes back with a resurgence in that super late game. But you still have this long window where he feels a little over uh, underwhelming against like five-man and push strats. Well, if you're just kiting around him, one of the easiest heroes to cut around. Really slow, needs that blink dagger if you can't afford it. Uh. I mean, look at their team. You've got dagger, you've got glimpses, you've got stuns from the Sand Sprouts. King, Sprout, N Kinetic Nindic. Field. They have a ton of ways to kite this Wraith King. Yeah, Jug, Jug looks pretty good. I concur. I'd well, be okay anything with, with uh, Diffusal Blade, pretty much. He's also someone who can actually lane against Darks here, right? We always talk about that being a pretty difficult subject. Um, about the you're going to have a Bounty Hunter in your lane with an Iron Shell as well. So... There's like going to be a lot of pressure uh, on that uh, safe lane, uh, and you have a Disruptor who's S not exactly SG, the strongest. Uh, it's yeah. a Jug. Good call. Yeah. SG does not have a lot of uh, catch. They have, what, an arrow? I mean, the new Dazzle slow could work. Yeah. Kind of lacking on control. I Maybe the skeletons can do the thing. I think it's all the skeletons. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's who I'm just going with every like game hero, from now on. Yeah, the heroes are newbie side. They're pretty hard to kill. You need to commit a lot. Uh, Queen of Pain... They don't have a lockdown for her. Sand King with the Sandstorm need to keep a dust. Uh, Raid King needs to have a Quelling Blade against the Sprout. Jog with the Spins. Raid really King is really a really good game, I think, in my opinion. He needs like to be blinking in, like Blade Mailing or Radiance. Or he needs some way that he's forcing them to deal with him to give Darkseer a good opportunity to actually initiate. Darkseer doesn't want to be the first guy in one of these fights. That's yeah. not going to go well. Like If I look at Newbie, they have the Sand King who can start things off. They have Glimpse who can start things off. Even just Queen of Pain hopping in and creating that vision where Sand King can then follow up with a two-man burrow. Yep. These are all good situations I see to start a nice fight for Newbie, and I don't see those for SG at all. I don't see any combo on side of uh, SG with the Dark Seer wall. Yeah, that's never good. Star Storm, yeah. or maybe a Dazzle Splash. Like, <laughs> like wake him into Dazzle's first spell. Look out. I, I think it'll be a tough game for the Bounty Hunter. Kind of as you mentioned, just generally not easy heroes for him to pick on in the lane. And we've all seen how difficult it can be if that Bounty Hunter you know, doesn't has a slow level 6. So to Queen speak. of Pain does not care about harassment from the Bounty. Yeah. Jog, old, I mean, it's gonna, they're, they're going to do the old thing like... Uh, Ricky or Bounty Hunter with the Darkseer Iron Shell. Mm -hmm. So they need to commit a lot uh, for sentry wards. Did they change the cost of a sentry or obs? Obs. Obs, right. 80 now. Sad support players here. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Here I'm we go. Uh, I'm picking newbie if that wasn't obvious already. Yeah, maybe we should do some, some predictions. It sounds like we'll probably be unanimous across the board. Lacoste, any, any hope for SG in this game? Can, can, you, can you see any way where they, they could take this? Is there some magic formula for them to find an edge? Vacant wall into 
Echo Slam from Dazzle. <laughs> <laughs> they can snowball, right? They have track. Um, uh, the possibilities there. Like they, they have some, some uh, pretty good laners. They, they lack theory. catch. That's the problem. If the game drags into mid-game, and especially if they lose uh, an early game, they will not uh, be able to afford, let's say, a Blink Dagger on uh, that Raid King. Uh, they have nothing to initiate with. And uh, yeah. Newbie can reset the fight pretty easily, especially with the Healing Ward. N now that can be casted while Jack is spinning as well. Yeah. If, uh, if these teams were reversed and I saw this draft from like Newbie or something, I could also say some things like, you know, if the Jug doesn't play well, the, the Wraith King can punish you pretty hard, right? Like, he is one of the squishier kind of agi carries. Um, you always think about, like, Sven or someone that can obviously, like, hit very hard and crit. Well, Wraith King does that now. He slams down pretty damn hard with that Mortal Strike. So That's true. There they is did a tweak chance the that if there are some mistakes from Moogie, he might be able to slam down hard with that Wraith King. Mistakes so. from Moogie. Well, that's okay. heresy, my I mean. friend. Okay, 2K MMR players, try uh, using Wraith King in jungle because he can one-shot one, one, shot, one shot a creep. That He's new yeah. Legion commander. Yeah, it's sick. He's, uh, he doesn't need an Iron Talon. Huh. Yeah, that's actually really good. Yeah. You could farm super fast. And then you can yeah. make some skeletons. It all comes back to the that skeletons. That's pretty interesting. I do think SG might struggle to break high ground. When I look at this draft, they, they don't have much siege power. May maybe the, the meteor hammer? Just wait till Raid King has refresher Five meteor hammers. Let's do this, boys. Yeah, you're, you're correct. Like, Mirana deals some of the damage. The other three don't. Uh, Raid King, of course, but uh, he needs to be yeah. not caught out yeah, of the position. Yeah, but how many lives is he going to have? Reincarnate, With orb? Aegis, Refresher Shard, <laughs> Reincarnate. He's never going to go down. Cheese. It's gonna be, yeah, Grave, there. Agonims. Wow. He's never <laughs> Trent, that, that is one daisy chain Your of turn, invulnerability Trent. right oh, there. I've just convinced myself SG Esports. They just won. Game. Yeah. It's already over. All right. Well, hopefully uh, this pause gets resumed quick, but uh, we do want to hand it over to our casters here and give you a chance to be introduced to the beautiful, the lovely Mr. Mott and Grand Grant to be casting our first series. No, oh, no, maybe not. Okay. My bad, guys. I messed up the throw. I thought we were handing it to the casters. Sorry. Well, we can talk about this well, patch. Yeah, I, I feel like no, we can talk about we this for 10 hours straight. I thought we were going to be able to this to them. I was, I was all good. I yeah, well, that's what I, I thought that was the plan, but that's okay. Um, can we talk about Viper for a second? Because he was a big deal on the last patch, and he has been changed uh, a, a fair bit. Now Poison Attack is sort of the old Nether Toxin and Poison Attack in one, and Nether Toxin is now replaced with an AoE Spell Amp, which is, gives Viper more utility than he's ever had. He's breaking people. Who else is breaking? It's great. Yeah, he's, he's the, I don't know, anything oh, yeah, that needs break. to be breaked. Uh, yeah. Bristleback, Huskar, yeah. whatever. I just leave the Viper talk to Mod, honestly. You know, that's the, the one thing that he knows about Dota. So at level, at level four, it's a, it, hmm, 25% is uh, the magic amp. It's interesting. I don't know, do you think we'll see Viper? Like, I mean, is, is, does he feel strong? He was pretty strong before. Notes? Like last patch, he was pretty common second phase ban, second phase pick. Right. Um, I'm not sure with the rework. I feel like there's other heroes I'd be trying out first. Well, one thing Mott pointed out when I thought, oh, wow, this is just, it's like Necrophos when they uh, combine the regen with the death pulse, and it's like, yeah. well, this is the obvious spell that you level. I thought that was the same for the poison, uh, or poison sting, or it was a poison, poison attack. attack. Poison yeah. attack, I'm sorry. But you don't want to spam that to get last hits, and now nether toxin isn't a passive, so you have to burn your mana pool instead of harassing to get those last hits for the nether toxin damage. So it's, it's sort of like a buff and a nerf at the same time. I, I thought that heroes who have been reworked, that they're not going to be in this patch. Oh, like they'd be out of CM? Yeah. Yeah. Because that's very standard, right? For the most part, anyone who's ever been yeah. reworked has been left out. So, well. so the ready? game seems to be ready. Are we? Are we good? I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Okay, oh, so I think we're going to casters. We're ready to rock and roll. It's Mott and Grand Grant to carry us into this first game. Thank you so much, guys. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining us. We are going to get into game number one. And Trent, you're right. I pretty much know about Viper. But what we don't know a lot about this patch, we're into our first game on land on this new patch with some big t It's going to be very exciting. I'm on me as Grant. And already we're going to have some act. Dust comes out. The Olacor is in trouble. Walking right into a Thunder Strike. The rest of the he's going to get chased down. They've got the Burrow Strike. They're going to get just like that. It's a good way to start this Grant. Yeah, you see them all going bottom because of where the rune is placed now. Switch with with uh, just... Nothing. It's just clear by the river, and we see four and five heroes going down there. And we already see one bug, you know, about up to fix with the, a disconnect. He did not start with the TP, unfortunately. Oh, so. wow. 
Interesting. It's a little bit rough for him, but yeah, these lanes, it's gonna be very interesting. I knew be the, the heavy favorite, but I think the Horn 5 roll from SG, they both came from Midas Club Elite, Theo, as well as Bardanio. I think they're gonna be very good. Obviously, Theo just fed first blood, but just watch out for them, and they're just gonna take over yeah, completely. Yeah, this rune is theirs, and Theo can't be, he needs to be careful walking up. He might have been spotted, but he's not <laughs> gonna grab it. They have pretty much, maybe they have a lot of their, I guess for heroes, the Moogie Jug, you have the Kaka King, the Queen of Pain for S Trip. So, I mean, if this was the last, we'd probably say, okay, yeah, Nubia looks like they have this just from the draft. But again, this is SG, this is on the match. There's new items to boot, there's a lot of changes. And so we'll see. I think the big thing is how this mid lane goes for ADR as we start this off. Yeah, uh, and, and Denai being so much more important now because you get so much, I mean, they just get less. You get a, you get a little bit less as well, but they get so much, a lot more like Dota 1 where at that point, it was 100% deny experience, which was something else. Yeah. It's me, but uh, we'll see how it goes. It's going to be Laposa down below on his favorite Dark Sea solo against an aggro trial lane from Mu Faith. And uh, Kaka's down here as well as Sand King. In the top lane, it's going to be an aggro lane as Costa Bila is going to be here on the river. Dino on the Dazzle and Theo Lacor on the bounty. And of course, that bounty will be roaming around. If they can't make a go here on KP in a moment, the glass coming out. They'll get the auto attacks off Pull away from Bardino, and that's an easy kill. Blow away that nature's profit, and Fiolacor will get a kill and a bit more experience to boot. Yeah, and he has been roaming pretty well. I mean, they've already played in a major minor already, and they, they've, they've had to play against the best, right? They're always the lowest seed. They're always against the liquids, the newbies, like they are here. And, I mean, they've had plenty of experience, so... Yeah. They're probably the most experienced team in South America right now, Easily. I would say, yeah. just because of how many tournaments they've played recently. There are still, the, the, the South American te the teams are just getting so much better as we move along. But Kaka down bottom, gonna go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Laposa, the Iron Shell, plus the auto attacks. The Bro Strike will come out, just some harass. I don't think there's gonna be anything coming up. So they do have Faith running over. He is level two, he's holding that skill point. He's got the Thunder Strike as well. Top lane though, we're gonna have more action. KP is gonna get dropped down again as the Olacor coming in. And it's another kill coming out with this tri lane for SG at the start. Yep, and one of the biggest things is Wraith King's level one crit is so much more value now. It's always 300% critical damage, so even though the percentage is lower, it's just an insane amount of damage if you do get that crit. A lot like a Jug crit. And then the skeleton's coming out too. The spooky skeletons is gonna be the more interesting part about Wraith King, but uh, Fiolacor will snag a, or rather, excuse me, a double damage crit from SCCC and actually do so much damage, so he's gonna have to tango up and be careful here. He does have a fairy fire as well. We see another room from Kaka mid. It looks like he's gonna try to set up. I think the ward spotted him on the way over, but uh, it looks like ADR is gonna sit pretty far back towards this tower and be fine for now. Yeah, it's an interesting matchup middle, only about one base damage difference between the two at level one, but I mean, ADR considered probably the best player besides maybe HFN or Queen Tekka in South America, and having him in the mid lane is, is very big, especially against SCC. I think he's certainly be the best mid laner, HFN, a carry player, yeah. and uh, King Tekka. Uh, top lane. lane again. Yeah, KP's getting chased down. Field of core. Another auto attack. He still had that double damage rune. And they are just destroying KP in this top lane of the Nature's Prophet. It is rough right now for him up in this top lane. Yeah, and we heard uh, Lacoste talking about or Trent. The three leap charges on Marana makes her in the off lane almost unkillable in middle lane. I mean, with the level one Sand King, you just leap away. Almost an unkillable hero without two stuns now. Yeah, it's pretty insane. So ADR should have a pretty good time. In terms of last hitting, he's 12 right now to S Triple C's 9, although S Triple C has 8 denies. Meanwhile, looks like at the top river we're going to have Kaka running in. Poison Touch will come through. Viola Core coming with a Janata hit as well. And it's going to be the Sandstorm. Do they have detection? They're going to drop a Sentry. Kaka goes for the Burrow Strike. He has no mana left. He has Stick Charges. Three of them. He should be able to use them and survive. Viola Core continue to chase. They've got the dust. They missed the uh, block coming out from the tree and still. Viola Core, can they get to the deny for Kaka? He sure can. And now they're going to turn to the KP. He might be the one in trouble. The damage from the Olacor and Bardino is heavy. He's going to go for the TP. It looks like he'll be able to make it out as there's no shuriken. And now S Triple C looking for the kill. Can't find it. He just got the Shadow Walk off just in time. And the Scream of Pain came too late from S Triple C. Yeah, the dust had just wore off the last second, too, when he Shadow Walked. And they're just going to be able to run away. And now Teal Costa is just free farming up top while Moogie's forced to go to the jungle. And they didn't really, like we talked about, that, I mean, it's so much harder for those carries without the Iron Talon. If they want to go to the jungle, just so much slower. Yeah, it's going to be a bit tougher if they have to take that a route. But for now, Costa Bile is doing great. 23 last hits. In terms of a start here for SG, this is about as good as it can get, I think, at least in terms of this top lane and maybe even in terms of mid as well. Yeah, definitely. And we see SCC, even though he's actually down on CS because the deny is just up almost a full half level on the Marana, which that change is going to be so big for those, like, you know, Dendi back at TI1, such a, a lane dominator, goes back to that now. So more skill base perhaps in the mid lane. Yeah. 
That's something that I think a lot of mid laners are, are mid laners are clamoring for, and a change that they're going to be really favored to. Yeah, they're so. a little bit mad about the creep missing now, but you know you can't have everything. Yeah. And I'm going to send Theo the core mid yet again here for the bounty hunter level two, but experience isn't everything for this bounty. He's getting a lot done across the map, helping out his wraith king, especially top lane. We'll just do some harass here on S triple C. Try to get that level uh, advantage just kind of swayed away and back in favor of ADR. So some harass going in mid, nothing too crazy. Um, you always have to be careful oh, with that H drop. Kaka, top lane. He's got a Burrow strike himself away. One more auto attack. They have Wraith Fire Blast too. They don't need it. Bardino, he'll get the kill with the Poison Touch, I believe. Down bottom looks like there's more action happening. Gloom's back. Looking for Laposa. They get the crit. He's solo. He'll salve up, though. And it looks like he'll be fine. Moogie's not going to dive the tower. He had already used his Blade Fury. And uh, Laposa will barely stay alive. Yeah, this is just good laning from SG Esports. Good movement from Theo. But top lane, I mean, they're just letting a Wraith King and Dazzle just bully. Bully the nature's prop, and they haven't really rotated anyone up there yet. Look at this deep ward. They know KP's forced to jungle. They could just start harassing him with Theolocor. They just run him up there, and all of a sudden, this could be problematic for KP. And uh, we'll see if that's going to be the case. He will have uh, Kaka to help him behind him, although he did just fall. But uh, Theolocor rotates bottom, looking perhaps for Faith. There's a clarity running. But they are, yeah, they're invading the jungle now. Here comes Costa Bile. They don't see KP. Now they do. They're going to spot him. They're going to ping him out. The Wraith Fire Blast should start this off. We'll have the Poison Touch come in. He pops the Mortal Strike, and there are the Skeletons, oh. and they get the kill coming in for Bardino. Yeah, and healing the skelet the Skeleton Heal Bomb, I didn't even think about it until now. Just always have targets to heal. An insane amount of damage after the stun. That is uh, quite the combo. Yeah, it's a combo that... Uh, Look at Faith, middle. Is he just dead, Shuriken? Oh, my God, 15 HP down to 10. So low. Theolacor getting chased down. They've got the dust. He's going to give his life for this. It was a good attempt. Won't get the kill. Uh, but uh, he got very close to bringing down Faith there. So he's doing his best making space. And I think that's fine. I mean, well, obviously it's not fine that he died. But Faith being level four and a half, uh, that would have been a big kill, solo kill for the bounty hunter. But instead he just gives away Radiant's experience to three people. It's fine. Uh, here Radiant's comes the Skeletons top lane. And they've got the Glyph coming out too. It doesn't affect the Skeletons. Though. They're going to die here to the Sandstorm. Kaka's going to take a little bit of gold. They've already put a lot of pressure on this tower. Shadow Wave will come out. They, do they have detection they on Bardinu? No, they only have a smoke at this point. So yeah, they have no detection, can't kill Kaka. In the meantime, it looks like Moogie's putting pressure on bottom, so maybe a trade for these tier 1s coming out? Yeah, it's an interesting trade, because Moogie knew he pushes along with his seed group. It's always the best time to push, and I mean, they're doing the same amount of work as two heroes are top. There's just no one bottom defending right now. Free tower. Yeah, and SG can't stay up here. They have two heroes behind the tower for newbie already. And the, the threat of the TPs is too strong, so they'll back up. It won't even be a trade at this point. But uh, Costabila is still doing really well in terms of farm grant. I mean, he's up to 3.8k. He's going to be picking up a Midas here, it looks like. He is at a, has it in his quick buy, but he might die here. Kaka's going to run in. They've got the Burrow Strike. He does have Reincarnation. No, it's not skilled up. I think he's holding a point, so he's ready. Poison attack coming in. Moogie with the spin as well. Costabile, the Grave comes out. He does have his ultimate. He did skill the Reincarnation, and he has plenty of mana for it. They're going to glimpse him back, and they're going to take it down. Where are the TP's coming in? It's going to be all five of Nubi up at the top lane, looking to get the secondary kill, but the Moonlight Shadow will come out, and they're not going to chase further, it looks like, even though they just rotated in S triple C. He's going to blink, get the banner, and they're going to make a convergence here on him. The pincer move. Can they find the kill? Costabile looking for a Wraith Fire Blast. Moogie's here as well. There's the arrow, the Star Storm. They need this kill. Can he blink away? He can't. The Kinetic Field won't help either. Feel the core coming back in. And no, a pause at a most inopportune time. Darkseer crashing for Laposa. But uh, still a very big kill there on SCCC in yeah, that top lane. Not only that, but before Theo even TP top, he killed the uh, chicken near the tier two dire middle. So a lot of team gold that way. And yeah, he's doing uh, an insanely good job on this bounty hunter, just moving around and creating a ton of space. And now it's a, a 4v4 going top with the Dark Seer still farming bottom. And I mean, Quap's dead. Dyer just has to get out of there. Yeah, they don't want to fight without the Queen of Pain. And um, Moogie has no ultimate either. Yeah, he's sitting at like half HP as well. He also, I think he just uses Healing Word. I'm yeah, not sure where it is. I think Faith is. is dead. I think they might just leave Faith and die here. They have the nice Sprout. And that might be enough, actually. A very good Sprout coming in from the Nature's Prophet. But they're going to continue to chase here. Yeah, Faith is still probably dead. Kaka's going to try to save him with a Burrow Strike. But they have Arrow in one second. They've got Wraith Fire Blast. They've got. Starstorm, they've got plenty of damage. Can they get Kaka as well? ADR is going in. He has that movement speed coming out. The leap coming through again. Burrow Strike misses, but the Omni Slash from Moogie turns it around. ADR with too much of a dive, and he gives a free kill to Moogie there. Yeah, that was interesting. We knew they were going to get Faith, and he got the nice double Star Storm on Kaka, but it was just not enough. And he dodged the stun with Leap, though, which was nice. Unfortunately, he does go down to the Omni Slash. All right. So far, so good here for SG. This is before they have track goal, by the way. Yep. 
I mean, that's a pretty good sign. They have a 2K net worth lead against Newbie in game one of the series, and they're down a tower at this point. Now Kaka, they've got the sentry. Ray Fire Blast will come through as well. Feel the core, going to chase through the trees. They're looking for the tower more than anything at this point. They're going to find it. Bardino gets the last hit. Kaka will burrow himself out and just skitter on away. In the meantime, in the middle lane, ADR, he will grab a kill on Faith. TP came in as well, but was canceled by SG as no one was needed. They might just stay top here, Grant. Yeah, this is so good because newbie. I mean, they want to move around and get those kills. That's why you have a Sand King roam around. You have a Nature's Proverb, right? You can always have the number advantage, but Theo is doing a good job of masking where he's going. He never walks under wards before he's shadow walked Radiant's or anything. And just perfect movement. Yeah, it's still level four, but he is doing so much work at this point in the game. And uh, the Iron Shell's going to help from Laposa. Laposa now up to Arcane Soul Ring level six as well, so. He's starting to get a bit farmed. He's a little bit behind, but he is ahead of KP because, again, KP had a very rough start in the beginning of the game. Uh, but it looks like they're going to set up middle lane for Newbie. They've got Faith here. They've got Kaka, level 5. They have a regen rune for SCCC. And uh, they're kind of just sitting here, and they will smoke up and the look for a kill. Of yep. And it is going to be the Midas on Wraith King. He has a Nastash waiting for the chicken to come back. So he is going to be uh, gearing up for the middle and like I'm surprised we didn't just see the armlet like we used to, but he knows something we don't. Yeah, he, uh, he's trying for this late game here. And Kaka, they're going to lead the way. They might find Bardino. It's the perfect target for SG to lose if they're going to lose anybody, and they will. He almost got the glyph off. He was mid-animation, but uh, not quite. In the meantime, Costa Vila thought about going back in. He had reincarnation in about 33 seconds. Yep. And but you see the Dire scan on top of themselves to be like, are they going to go back on us? So they saw it was green, nothing going on. Yeah. Now they can just... The, the bad thing is that there's no tower to take here in this bottom lane, unfortunately. Yeah. They committed a lot just to get that one kill on a support, by the way. Yeah, and ADR just pushing middle with that seed rune. Now you see the tower moved a little bit to the left, making it a lot easier for the raiding. We didn't see it this game, but raiding can invade from that bottom river now. We've seen a lot of... Ooh, nice arrow. He's just trying to get this tower, but it's already at half HP. We've seen a lot of Moranas go for that, like, more auto-attack type build that uh, the Aghanim set for recently. Yeah. Um, Aghanim's just so bad now. Yeah. Just for the cost, this, the stats, it just doesn't give her anything. The Olacor gets the Courier again. He might die for it, but I'm sure it's worth it. Burrow Strike comes out, he's dead. He buys before he dies, I believe. So, not not bad at all for him. Yeah, two Courier, both flying kills, too. He didn't even kill the original one, but he's doing a great time just killing those Couriers, getting the rest of his fourth gold. All right, don't look now, Grant, but it's a 3k net worth lead for SG Esports here. It's a very good start. They have the Midas for Costa Bile to get into the late game, but yep. uh, can they keep it going here? Really, 20 attacks to over 40 Wraith Fire Blast DPS. A little surprising. Obviously, he wants to go to the right click with the Midas and Treads. He attacks pretty damn fast now. Yeah. Get a lot of those Mortal Strike procs too, which will be nice. Yeah, SG definitely though, like I, I'm sure during the first, like during Star Ladder, there's so much pressure on him, you know, to play against some of the best. And then again, they played versus just everybody during the uh, last tournament. Now they're here again playing against Nubian top scene. They just look so comfortable. Yeah, they will. Nubi will smoke up. Yeah, I mean, you're right, SG. They, they look like veterans though. at this point. Yeah, there's a ward there as they smoke on top of the shrine. And Nubi aren't going to get caught by this. Can they set something up to counter initiate on SG? Radiance it doesn't look like it. They're just going to push bottom instead. They want to take a tier one, and I think they can do so here. They have the skeletons. Looks like they have about five of them. This is good for newbie because they know all five of them are bottom with how the raid king's position. They're like, oh, well, we can just trade a, a, a tier one for a tier one with them wasting a smoke. So newbie's actually super happy with this. SG will glyph. He's creep stay alive longer. Also, that mid lane stays alive a bit longer as well. And SG. They're going to TP mid. They're going to try to defend this, it looks like. They need to be careful. Tracks are out now. Theolacor is level 6. Wraith Fire Blast. S triple C. He's got the raindrop. Arrow coming in. Doesn't hit in time. Would have been nice if it could. And now Nubi are looking to counter initiate. Burrow Strike would be great. No blink tag from Sand King. Only 500 gold and level 6. And uh, they're going to take this tier 1 tower, but already the pressure comes in on this tier 2 bottom for Costa Bile. That's funny. They, they sent him back to like, oh, we don't want to fight the Wraith King. So they glimpse him all the way back to bottom lane. They're like, oh, man, that was a bad idea. We might lose a 2-2 two -two for this. Yeah, the glyph does come out, which means that they might be able to back up and set themselves up bottom to defend. Burrow Strike coming in. They're going to have it on ADR. He's got Leap. He's got two more charges left, too, and Moonlight. I don't know if they can chase him down. He's going to Star Storm. Gets the double proc on Nakaka, plus plenty of auto attack damage. 
Dazzle's not close enough there. Baiting this in. Wraith Fire Blast comes in. Good Sandstorm coming out from Kaka, though, to stay alive. The track comes out next. They really want this kill. This fight is getting split up. ADR getting chased down by SCCC. Glimpse back in. Kaka's been lost already. ADR still getting chased. SCCC is on an island right now. He's out in the middle of nowhere. They've got the arrow. He's so far out, and he's just dead at this point. He was completely separated from his team, and SG, they'll find two kills for their trouble. Yeah, because the Wraith King found so Dyer's much in the laning phase, like, the, the Dire Squad just has nothing to deal with all these stuns, like, stun into arrow every single time. Even the, we see the Nature's Pride, he might be farming a Blink Dagger first item. Like, they might need that evasion for KP, and he's saving up tons of gold. This is, uh, it's starting to look problematic at this point, because, again, the track gold, gold is starting to kick in at this point. They're getting more money. They have a 4K lead. Not that much, but, Dyer's again, remember... Tower. These games could end earlier now with the new patch and how things have been changed, so we'll see. Yeah, we see Raid King, he's going for the Raid. I would love him to go for the Nullifier here, especially against the Quap. You know, the just the permanently the Silence for Five Saiyans and Mute as well. Yeah. So good. Nullifier and it's damage. Nice. Yeah. Radiance is always good. Though. Yeah, the classic build. I believe Nullifier, I think we were just talking about it, actually. I think it's just the Mute is just uh, on items, not an actual yeah, Silence. Not, yeah. So I lied. It would be bad. <laughs> Pardon me. You're pardoned. Yeah, we haven't seen much from the Darkseer yet. He's just been farming. They've been pretty much 4v5ing with the Darkseer just farming it, which is how you really want it to be as a Darkseer. And he has a mech now, mana boots as well as a soaring. I mean, he's ready to... He can fight with them if he wants. They could honestly 5-man pretty easily here. I mean, like, the only thing he's been doing is been, like, driving by and giving Ion Shell to some of his teammates, but he really hasn't been involved in your right. And with this with this mech, this is probably the perfect time for it. So the fact that they've been fighting essentially 4 versus 5 in these situations is pretty good. They'll take the Tier 1 Tower mid. They've got a Skeleton Army coming out for the once Skeleton King, now Dyer's Wraith King, and they're tower. pushing into this Tier 2. And we'll see if Newbie want to go ahead and try to defend this. Coast uh -oh. Melee, aggressive positioning. Faith is in trouble. The Raindrop will block most of the damage. Good block with that tree coming out to stop that arrow. They will still get Faith, though, who is yet to cast a Static Storm in this game. And uh, they'll work on the tower. And here comes the Skeletons yet again. This Tier 2, it's going to fall, it looks like. Yeah, this is great. King's just so farmed right now. We, we see uh, Dyer doing what they need to do, split pushing top as well as bottom. But the problem is if they start going base, I mean, there's no glyph from the Dyer side. It doesn't look like they want to. Are Radiant going to come back? They're pushing bottom at this point for, for newbie. Moogie's just going to go ahead and TP. He's going to Blade Fury TP. That's fine. Coast to be like, can't stop him. Uh, maybe things are going to get slowed down, but up towards the top here, we have Kaka getting chased by Fiolacor. They've got the track. He's going to continue to chase. He has earned charges as well. Janata coming out. We'll see maybe some counter initiation. KP thought about running in, but no. They're going to back up. It's it's farming time here for a bit at least, Grant. Yep, they're just making space for the Wraith King right now. Roaming is those four while he farms, and he is almost has a relic. It was just, what, two minutes ago when he had like 500 gold, he's up to 3.3k now. He's super high in the net worth chart. Yeah. Like, way higher than Moogie, way higher than ADR. It's frightening how strong he is right now. Yep. So they can't really fight into him, because again, you also have reincarnation as well. Yeah, and we do see actually the Nature's Prod spends his money on that Midas. Just, I mean, try to catch up as much as you can. Is this too late, or is this? Uh, does he need to do this nah, for KP? He has to do it. I wouldn't be surprised if we. Yeah, no, nah, it's fine. Uh, they've got the Olacore. The dust just hit, and Glimpse came out. I think the dust was just on the tip of it too. So. Yeah. Well, it seems so weird seeing Diffusal Blade without charges on it anymore. Yeah, it's strange. The cooldown is pretty high too. I think, if I remember correctly, it's something ridiculous. 15 seconds. Yeah. It's not too bad. I mean, compared to what it used to be, though. Yeah, you I mean, think about you it. just use it. But now, without any charges, you don't feel the need to do much. Yeah. And here we go. Smoking after a death. So they might not expect it. I mean, this is not who they want to fight. Fire Blast. Yeah, Faith, uh, Faith will tank the gank. No big deal. I think the rest of them should be able to get out. Moogie's already played Fury and TP. Yeah. And in the meantime, th this is the thing. When you have a Nature's Prophet, even if you lose a couple of heroes, you can always sort of rely on the split push. But the Olacor is going to come back and probably harass him. Um, maybe try to cancel a TP or something. Yeah, I he, don't know if they could set up in time. Yeah, they would need someone to TP right now because by then he could just run away with his phase boots, even with the uh, the bounty hunter stopping his TPs. All right. So they might just want to pressure top, make a, make them commit. Oh man, he's really just he is just shadowing KP, but he can't really do anything at this point. But uh, we'll see. Maybe they can stop some TPs as Costa Bile is pushing up in this top lane, the tier two, the last outer tower for newbie here might fall at 19 minutes into the game. So far, so good for SG Esports. They still remain at a 4K advantage at this point. 
And this is before we've even seen Roche, anything along those lines. Any real big, we haven't even seen like a five on five team fight yet. It just hasn't happened. No, we haven't. SG's done a good job of just splitting up the map. And because they got so far ahead by splitting it up early, now Newbie themselves are forced to split push because they just can't win a, a five on five until they get their core items. And Sand King does have a blink now, though. Oh, that is a huge item for Newbie. Get them some initiation. Get them some uh, potential here to fight five on five. Ooh, good blink away from Kaka. Wraith Fire Blast should be too late here. The TP should complete. And Coast Bila can't find it. Just blinked a little bit too far away. And now the Radiance is pretty much done here. He just needs the recipe at this point. And when he gets that, maybe they can consider getting a bit more aggressive in terms of taking this last tier two, perhaps Roche, but they are going to Moonlight Shadow. They're going to head bottom and try to find something here. KP in the back lines, S Triple C might be able to get away. They're going to stalk KP. He's in the tree lines. They found him. Arrow will come through. It will hit. Now the Janata proc, the track is there. Kostavila was looking for the stun in S Triple C, but he's able to get out. So KP, he will tank the gank this time, and it looks like S Triple C will be able to get out just fine. Yeah, the aggressive Moonlight Shadow into a, a nice arrow from ADR. Just free track gold at that point. Theo was down bottom that whole time for like four minutes, just following him around, getting a little bit of experience here there. But a smoke gank top now on Laposa. Laposa is in a lot of trouble here. They've got the Static Storm. He has mech, but he's going to get Omni Slash. I don't think he's going to survive this, and that is a great kill for Newbie. Get them back in this. Maybe Newbie could have... Uh Gotten a little bit more there if SG committed harder, but it's it's tough. I like what you're talking about. I mean, the Midas from Nature's Prophet is great. I mean, you have a, a Queen of Pain, Nature's Prophet, and Jug. You're obviously going to outscale almost any team, especially against a, a Wraith King and a, a what is it, Marana. Yeah. So no reason to panic yet for Newbie. It is still a 4K net worth lead, and this could have gotten out of control. But for now, they're doing a good job of split pushing. That's the one thing keeping them in the game for now. Newbie making sure they can get these waves pushed out. Bottom is still way pushed out here. You can see it in this bottom lane. It's just really rough stuff. And then top also, you can see uh, Newbie doing the same, just making sure that these waves are as pushed as possible. It just feels like SG now with their lead. I mean, it's staying pretty stagnant, four to five K. It feels like they're just not doing enough and they're allowing Newbie to actually just farm all around the map. Yeah. So what moves do they need to make then? How do you combat this? Oh, uh, like top lane before newbie started running away, you need to set up on that somehow. You just need to get some deeper wards down. Radiant really hasn't, they've got a ward top and a, a ward near the secret shop bottom, but they just haven't made moves. They've just been letting the Wraith King farm, and honestly, it probably won't be enough in late game if that's all they do. Can they, like, take Roche at any point? Like, can they get a pick and take Roche? Maybe if it's no, KP? Not or? against new. Against the Disruptor as well as a, a Sand King, like, it, you have to pick those two off if you're going to do that. Yeah. Because if you pick off a, a Nature's Prophet, he could just buy back TP in. It's not that big of a deal. They might get KP here. They're setting up in this bottom lane. Arrow just misses. Track will come out, and with that arrow missing, they're going to have to back up. Are they really heading for Roche now? And the scan hits, too. It sees Bardino as he's heading into the pit. And we'll see what moves they decide to make here for Newbie. They're pretty far at this point. How fast is Roche dropping? Kind of quickly. They need to start hurrying over if they want to contest this. And I'm not sure if they're keen on it. They're starting to move now. As Triple C is teeping to the shrine, they're making moves towards bottom lane, but not towards Roche. It looks like they, they're just going to give this up here, Grant. Yeah, they are. And we finally do see our first uh, new item of the patch on the Nature's Prophet. He has a Meteor Hammer. Oh, boy. Interesting. Interesting choice I of think the, the panel, person. The panel has some strong opinions on this uh, this particular item. Yeah, it's good. I mean, HP regen, intelligence, as well as being able to siege more towers. I mean, if he's going to be split pushing either way, just adds a little bit to that. So you have like the you have the damage from the trance, which is wet, whatever. But yeah. then you have the meteor hammer. You drop that down yeah. on one of those towers, and all of a sudden you're doing some serious damage. Plus the nature's profit auto attack. And even now with just a, a Midas, at least he has some sort of team fight, even though it's pretty long uh, cast time. Uh, they're going to find Kaka here, potentially. The smoke is about to break. They're going to have the Moonlight Shadow as well. They don't really want this hero. It would be better to get KP or a core, but they can find a pick. They might even find a full five-on-five -five fight as they're wrapping all the way around right now. And we'll see if they back up. S-Triple-C is already walking away. Looks like he's going to get into the tree line and blink. They'll see Mugi, they'll feel the core, Iron Shell, Kaka. They're going to jump on. They've got the Wraith Fire Blast, and he's going to be in some trouble. Mugi's going to go for the TP, and he's going to be able to make it out. So they somehow only get one kill out of that initiation. So very good back from Newbie at just the perfect time, but they will still lose one. That's the problem. They even take some tower damage on the Tier 3 bottom, and it just feels like SG's not getting enough done again. At least they do get the kill on Sand King, meaning they can't fight again, but... They just go back to split pushing. You have a, a Nature's Prophet as well as a Queen of Pain who can just farm all over the map, as well as a Juggernaut who can just spin TP. They have nothing to stop that yet. So do you have to commit to something here for SG, or are you not really worried that much? Feels like you'd want to. Maybe just fully commit to that Tier 2 top and 
maybe Newbie wants to defend you, get a win, but I think Newbie's fine just letting that go and defending uphill. It, it's just tough. Newbie seems like they're in a good position, even though they're down 3K. Right. I mean, th this is obviously a very good team. Second place CI, and yes, it's a new patch, but SG versus Newbie, you look at it objectively and you think, yeah, Newbie, they've probably got this. They've got their comfort heroes. They're in a really good position, only down 3K right now. SG, they might have to make something happen here in the next few minutes. They have the top two heroes in net worth. They've got plenty of damage. They have a newly minted blade mail. Now a pipe as well on the darks here. They have pretty much everything they need to team fight, but it's just the waves that they have to worry about. And we'll see if they commit here to this mid lane and try to go for a high ground push. Bottom lane, though, they're going to find a target. It's going to be Bardino, and that might slow things down a little bit as bottom is going to get pushed in yet again. Yeah, says the okay because he actually had his glimmer cape on in his stash. So if he would have had that, he actually would have been a okay living right there. Unfortunately, it was in his stash. Rough stuff. The life of a dazzle. Oh, did he pick up the? He's level ten. He hasn't picked up his talent yet. The sixty damage talent, which is insane. Yeah, I think his his skills are just too good. I mean, shallow grave and shadow wave. He needs to max out before he gets any of that. Yeah, the new poison touch. He only has one level in. I'm sure that's fine. Grave, very good ability here in this game, but. All right, top lane, meteor hammer. See you, creep wave. I like how he, he went up there to uh, position himself away because he knew the uh, Marana was there. He just yeah, makes it so he can't get arrowed while he does it. This has got to be pretty frustrating for SG. They just can't find the heroes they want. They found like the the Faith Disruptor. They found the Kaka Sand King numerous times, and maybe once or twice KP. And they, they just can't find these big cores in Mugi and SCCC, who, by the way, this Queen of Pain now has a BKB ready to go and is building into a Shiva's Guard for his next item. Yeah. That'll be nice. I mean, he still can't, like, over blink into, like, BKB blink into a fight. Because if Wraith King just right clicks him down, he's still going to die. He does a ton of damage, but it's going to be so hard to pick him off now. Middle, though. Here we go. They're looking for another pick, and yes, it's the Sand King. He's going to burrow himself out looking for a TP. They don't have vacuum. He's going to get away. No way to stun. The arrow comes in way too late, and so they can't even find that kill. But they are congregating mid, and the waves are about as good as a pushed out as they have been here for SG in a while, at least the bottom one. If they can definitely pressure. They might get pressured themselves top, but ADR does a good job of just going to stop that split push already. Make sure the co-op stays here. They're doing some good tier 3 damage here with the uh, these skeletons, but Costa Bile taking a lot of hits here. Might be in trouble. He does have three lives, so shouldn't be too concerned. ADR, though, no boots to travel. He's pretty far away, and again, SCCC has BKB. He'll have TP back in 15 as well. But they do get at least some chip damage here on this tier three tower. That's good. More than half the HP. Unhealable. Unhealable so. damage. That's Grant. good. Especially with the tier fours being the same way now. Split pushing just so much a bigger deal now. Yeah. No shrines to work with on the high ground either. Once you take that tier three, get those shrines outside the base and go from there. Manta now done for Mugi as his next item is up. There's the Shadow Blade as well. So this Nature's Prophet just picked up this Meteor Hammer. Now has the full Shadow Blade on top of it. And he's going to continue to split push. He's making his home pretty much in bottom and top. And he'll continue to push in with these uh, treants. Yeah, it's just so hard to stop this split. I mean, when you saw the draft from SG, you're like, they just don't have that much to deal with split pushing while their team has Queen of Pain, Nature's Prophet, as well as a Juggernaut with Manta now. But they're just congregated middle, possibly going just for a five on five. Let's go for the, the racks. Lift is going to come out. That'll be on Dakota Bile. It was working on the tier three tower. S Triple C given more time to take this top tier two. That's great stuff. That allows KP to come in if he wants to continue to push that top lane. Now Costa Bile running in, was looking for Faith. He used the Wraith Fire Blast on an illusion. The Glyph is coming out. They have their own if they want to use an offensive glyph, but the Nature's Wrath comes through for SG. Lankborough coming out. They still have that Aegis. They really, no, the Aegis is gone. He's only got Reincarnation now, but he's going to get surged away. Shadow Wave and Glimmer Caped as well. Kaka is trying to chase. They've got the Glimpse back on Laposa. He's got Pipe and Mech. They don't want to use that Static Storm. They're going to find Kaka with a Wraith Fire Blast now. Static Storm comes in the Vacuum Shuriken Toss. Kaka's low, not dead yet, though. The arrow's sailing through, and it's going to miss. They did take down the Tier 3 Tower, though. In the meantime, S Triple C and KP split pushing like crazy, though, Grant. Yeah, they almost took down a Tier 3, their own bottom and top even chunked a little bit of damage away. And they're, they're happy with that. All they lost was a Tier 3. Not that big of a deal. Look at where KP is. He is actually just going to go for this. And there's no backdoor protection right now. Uh, it should kick in here in a moment. He's probably waiting for the Meteor Hammer. 13 seconds. Yeah, Can't wow. He's just going to sit here and wait for the Meteor Hammer. No, he's going to have the Trance first. He's going to TP out. SCC top. They're going to catch him. He has BKB. He's going to use it. He should be fine. But he's taking a lot of damage. He will blink out into the shrine and pop it. But that is his 10-second BKB now down. Press triple C. Yep, there we go. Doesn't even have to use his Meteor Hammer. And a Tier 3 goes down on both sides. So Newbie happy with how that whole thing went down. Yeah, that's huge. And these Trants are just doing some work bottom. But 
No big deal. They will uh, be cleared out eventually. ADR does have a double damage rune. And uh, we might see them wait for next Roche, perhaps. I, I don't know what move you make here for SG, but you've got to be a bit concerned still, I think. Yeah, because we saw, I mean, they grouped up as five. They barely took down a tier three, and they were losing two tier threes at the same time. They just don't have anything to deal with it. We'll see how this goes. 4,000 gold for Costa Bile. 4,400, in fact. Yep. Oh, he might die, actually. Omni Slash coming in. They pop the Defusal as well. That's one life. And his team is nowhere near him. Buy out, my friend, buy out. You are dead, Wraith King. Coast to Bila, there's nothing you can do here. And he loses 500 gold from that, saving up whatever he's going for. Nice pick up there by Newbie. That's probably the biggest kill of the game at this point. He's dead for 60 seconds. It was a mega kill spree going yep. to uh, SCCC, which is probably the worst hero to give it to. And he's building into Assault Kuros next. And now you have 50 seconds with no Wraith King. If you want to do something here for, for a newbie, you, you can probably get a tier two tower out of this, one would assume. Yeah, it looks like they're paying out. They could have even, they can pressure bottom as well as middle. Without Wraith King, they have no damage. Like the Priest of the Moon, or the Marana only has a BKB and a Manta style. Without Wraith King, they do absolutely nothing. Yeah. So this uh, 30 seconds still without the Wraith King. There is no Glyph coming out here on this Radiant team. I think they used it offensively to get that tier three tower, I believe. Not sure, but either way, they won't have it. And uh, Roche will also be up in 40 seconds as well. That's uh, the next Roche timer, and that's going to be probably the biggest fight of the game. Yeah. Newbie's just nervous to fight into a Dark Seer. They still haven't fought into the Dark Seer yet, you know, pushing into him or fighting at Roche. Like, we haven't seen any walls yet, any pipes really, or mechs. And they're still probably just nervous about that. Yeah. Rightfully so as well. You get a good wall off, and all of a sudden, you think. Things can change drastically with the Marana coming in. We'll see if that's going to be the case. But, uh, yeah, we, we really haven't seen that full five-on-five -five engagement in general. SG have tried. They haven't found it. Uh, newbie just avoiding it, as you mentioned. But we'll see where this goes from here. As, again, Roshan, that's going to be the next big target for both of these teams. It's up literally right now. We'll see if they can uh, move their way over there. And we see Shrines just going all over the place. Pretty much every Shrine's down now, except for Dyer's a bottom Shrine. But that Shrine's not that big of a deal at all. No. Shouldn't be an issue. No, it's not the one close to Roche. That's the big thing. Just some gold be taken here for these teams. KP, the Olacor has it, the gem. Oh. He almost spotted him. Yeah, but bottom lane, they're just losing racks right now. They have no Glyph. S Triple C just did some serious damage to this range racks. And he just blinks out. Plus, he still has his BKB. He can continue on here. Yeah, he could have just taken it there if he wants. But he's like, I mean, it's not going to heal up. I can just keep doing this. If you guys are going to continue to 4 and 5, man, I'm just going to sit bottom. And you can't do anything. FB center them. getting channeled. They're going to go in. They're looking for the burrow. They're going to find it. They're going to get the Marana. No, the Grave comes out perfectly timed. Bardino coming in. The Yule Scepter will be there. The vacuum back into the wall. Pop down. Maybe they can turn this and get Kaka out of this. In the meantime, KP's pushing into the top lane. But Kaka, he's going to burrow away. Might be able to make it out if you're close to be like Wraith Fire Blast from downtown. He'll hit it, plus a couple of auto attacks. Kaka has got another bro in one second. No Yules, no Blink Dagger, not able to survive. But again, KP taking the top tier three tower and now starting to work on these racks as their back door protected. Yeah, it just feels like the, the team came in with a better game plan. They knew they might have a little bit rough early game, and now they're just dominating the late game, even with that one kill. Uh, feels pretty rough right now for SG. I mean, they're not even that far. They're they're less than they actually have an advantage, I believe, by about less than a 1k. But it just feels rough. Yeah, I mean, they're, they all their base is pretty much exposed, and they're they're against a Nature's Prophet as well as a Queen Pain. So, how much more they can do? They're waiting. They want to see if Wraith King maybe can jump in right here, but everyone's already gone. They're gonna go for a smoke. I think it was spotted by this ward up on the high ground in the mid lane, I believe. So they're gonna. We'll see where they make their move. They're going to go into Roche, SG. They want to try to get an Aegis out of this. This will be Aegis and Cheese. And they'll take it pretty quickly. Although, S Triple C is close. There is a ward scouting his movement out up in the high ground. He's going to scream and push into this top lane. So again, they need to be careful they don't lose this top lane of Rax. Roche still getting lower and lower. Courier coming out, delivering some items. Roche will fall, and they need to get back and defend at this Rax. They're going to get Roche. They're going to get the Aegis for Costa Bile, and Cheese will be picked up by ADR. And they will back up together as a team. In the meantime, Manta style, or rather just some illusions coming out here for the Queen of Pain, putting some pressure on this Rax. Yeah. And I mean, it's a, a nice Roche. They don't really lose anything for it, except for a little bit of map control because of all the lanes getting pushed in. But they're happy with this. They definitely... The thing is, Newbie is never going to team fight him unless it's like at their advantage, which 
it really isn't. They're just going to continue to split, push, and farm. Yeah. They, they have the better late game. So how do you keep these waves pushed out? Do you, do you get boots of travel? So you push out one wave, and then you TP with your team as they're pushing mid? I mean, what do you have to do here in order to, to, to get these waves pushed out and to actually get a push going for SG? It feels like that's probably what they have to do, but SG is just content with farming themselves, which might not be the right play, but I mean, the Marana does have a butterfly now. You do have the Wraith King, like you said, have the Assault Curse, and another Courier goes down. I'll take that as tribute. And we do see the Wraith King level 20 goes for the No Reincarnation Mana Cost, which is really nice, especially against the Juggernaut, right, with the Manta Defusal. And I believe That's that used to be nice the level talent. 25 talent, too. Yeah, this is such a nice talent to have right now. And there it is. He also just picked up the bot. So we were just talking about this. Yeah. Now he can stay in the lane until he pushes it out significantly. TP to the rest of his team as they're pushing somewhere else, perhaps mid, perhaps top lane. We'll see. Yeah, and this is where Faith comes into play. You know, this guy's won a TI. With a, one simple glimpse like that, they could just take the whole base. Yeah. This guy knows his Disruptor. He's got level 2 Static Storm. He's up to 2,300 gold. We'll see if he decides to build into something maybe like an Agnum. So, no, all right, four staff. That's fine. You see the, the warding out. Two wards from Radiant, only really one from Dire. Neither team really has control of this map right now. This is just split push Dota now from both teams. S Triple C, they're kind of baiting this. Costa Bila is backing up. They don't see anybody on the map, so Costa Bila, ooh, this is a very scary position for him. He is going to back up smartly because there were three heroes bottom, including the Juggernaut and the Queen of Pain. He could have got jumped on and killed. Yep. Lose that Aegis. Oh, and here we go. Top lane ADR setting up for this arrow up in the trees. They need Theo. this to hit. They need it to hit. And here it comes. He's going to dodge wow. it. No, it just hits. And they're going to blow him away. ADR, plenty of damage there. And Theolacor stalking his prey. They're going to try to get these Triants too. They're trying to cut the wave at this point, but they're going to get taken down. ADR is going to use all of his leap charges for this. But you know what? It's fine. He got a lot of gold out of it. Yeah, he did. And they brought down Nature's Prophet. Who does that buyback? Probably won't use it unless they really do want to try to push in. But Faith already doing a good job of pushing back out mid. I don't know, man. Bottom's still pushing like crazy here. Yep. And there's no tier three at that tower. So if you commit to something, you got to do it soon. And they are. There's the buyback coming in from KP. Will they go top? Yes, he's going to try to push in. The backdoor protection is going to be gone in just a second. They're going to try to take two racks while SG take one. The glyph comes out from K Newbie. SG, they should have their own uh, glyph as well. They just used it, in fact. Rax is down mid. Are they going to go for the finish here? Tier 4, no. They're going to instead look for Kaka. They're going to vacuum him back. Yule Scepter will keep him alive for now at 320 HP. Static Storm. Walls drop down. It doesn't hit. The arrow coming through. That wall didn't hit Kaka. It looks like it should. They're going to take down the top Rax. Now they're moving out for Tier 4. for newbie back in the base. And they're going to TP back home and try to defend this. They'll take down a Tier 4 for SG as well. Now Kaka coming with a burrow strike. The Omni Slash coming through. The Sonic Wave doing a lot of damage. There's Neon coming out. The Reincarnation is there. The Core is in trouble. The Blade Fury Moogie, he's got no Omni Slash, he just used it, coming out, Laposa getting low, Guardian Greaves on cooldown for now, they're gonna lose S Triple C, he's got buyback, buybacks everywhere, including the Bounty Hunter, Rax going down top lane, they're looking for the tier 4 for SG, Costa Bile wants to finish this off, now the Wraith Fire Blast on Moogie, a lot of damage being done, he's got the Manta, he's gonna drop, he's got buyback, now they're going on the Ancient, a triple kill for ADR, they're actually doing this, everybody is buying that for Newbie, they've got the Epicenter, can they bring him down, there's still the Aegis for Costa Bile, Laposa's getting low, he's got Guardian Greaves, in four seconds. Can he get it off in time? He cannot. He will fall. He's got buyback. ADR starting to get low as well. Costa Bile, the ultra kill from ADR. They're working on the itch. Can they actually do this? And they're going to get another kill on the Nature's Prophet. That's a dieback. It looks like SG might be able to get this done. Costa Bile, he's got another life. He's got reincarnation. They're trying their damnedest. ADR pops the BKB and the cheese. And Queen of Pain almost gets trapped as well. Moogie, ADR gets the rampage. He finds the kill on the Queen of Pain. The double rampage. Page comes out oh, and ADR he carries them to the finish. I cannot believe that just happened. What a what a game. Just they, they decide to go push middle. They're gonna let the other team push bottom. They take a racks, realize what's happening, they kill the nature's prophet who just bought back, and they just keep pushing forward. What a game from SG, especially uh ADR. Like didn't feel like he had that great of a game. He laned very well middle, and then he it felt a little bit down during the mid game and then just late game just picked it up and then double rampage that was an unbelievable performance we talked about them having to commit maybe trying to take something like that racks like that last fight and they did just that so with that game in the books game one of this best of three series is going to go to sg esports in a pretty unbelievable fashion really well played from both teams but sg at the end get it done with that we're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be right back here with game number two around the corner <laughs>
Get the Alpha, be the Alpha. With the Strafe Esports app, follow your favorite teams and players, and you'll never miss a match again. Strafe, everything esports. Download now on iOS and Android. All right, folks, welcome back in the wake of a very exciting.